ready. <laughs> Rekyyli ei ole ehkä ihan niin paha kuin ootin, mutta voimaa on kyllä. Back later, folks. I'm Officer Greg. Behind the camera is Jeff. Jeff is the Jam Master DMC. Cause one, two, three, four casualties. Hey, we're out here today. Evan Perry from Texas. You might remember him from uh, previous videos. Just gonna throw up a flattering picture of him here on the screen. <laughs> That's Evan's the only gonna... picture I have of him. <laughs> Evan sent us out uh, another creation, a fine creation that he whittled together. This is gonna be three ball bearings. Three they're, bearings. They're, they're, not, they're technically radial bearings. They're, oh, so people are gonna say, oh, those are skateboard bearings. Be skateboard bearings, I think, are 22 millimeters. These are 17 millimeter. So it's just a matter of a few different millimeters. Yes. That's what she said. So um, we got three of these bearings mounted on a central post. So it's shaft. We call got, it a shaft, Greg. Right, you've got three balls on a shaft is what we'd like. So what the kids in the comment section would like to say. They are mounted on the shaft. They're not just three balls stacked. Jeff's going to show you one on the tabletop. So um, we're going to see if they hold together on that little shaft and fly down range like they're supposed to, or if they break apart and spread all over creation. So. Well, the the idea he specifically wanted to go through rifling so they, they spin. The idea is we're going to try to get some close-up shots of the of them flying through the air. Is the is it that will it be stable with just the outer race spinning? Or will the, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but it's just kind of a think probably outside the box experiment here. Probably best if you get down here with Doug and film towards me with the shotgun. Yeah, 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 I could do at that. You. Uh -huh. We do have a Remington 870 today with a rifled barrel, fully rifled barrel. Everybody, what? Everybody always asks, when did, what since kind of are you using? Since when, did, <laughs> since when did shotguns have rifling? Shotguns can't have rifling. Everybody knows that rifling makes everything better, and I mean everything. So uh, we've got a fully rifled barrel all the way from chamber to muzzle, and uh, we're gonna send these downrange in a rifled barrel. See what they do. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Oh, ski off on his head. Very Late. little recoil on that. Was there? Very little. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, somehow we can't find it. It just, you can see the... There's a circular the, mark on it there. It hit perfect. Yeah. Evan did it again, man. And it almost, look at that, it almost wants to, uh, it almost... Like a, like a hole cut, yeah, a hole cuttered it. Hole cuttered it. That, yeah. That little piece That's of uh, real thing. Kevlar right there. But yeah, we looked all over the place. Can anyone see it out here? Uh, it's down here. Let's, wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's another old bungee. Sorry, Doug. Okay. Sorry to go rooting around on your undergarments. Okay, there, we'll Doug. find it next week or sure. something like if that. Not, yeah, that's... We'll, if not, we'll make it up and we'll show you something else completely <laughs> different. In test number one, things look absolutely fantastic, but a lot of things could have gone wrong. One of my biggest concerns was that the entire assembly would break apart from inertia, something we would call the Newton's cradle effect. But remarkably, the assembly held together. We also had excellent spin, great stability, and on top of that, which is always a bonus, good accuracy. And that is difficult to achieve. We got the world famous ballistic gel gummy bear. Has anyone, other channels copied this on that one yet? <laughs> God. Remember when everybody was shooting the, the five pound gummy bears? Yeah. Who was the first one to do that? Right here. Okay, I'm ready. All right, right between his two little paws. Okay. Wow. An impact on the burn. Yeah. There you go. Look pretty accurate so far. You're, yeah, you're aiming right between his paws. You called it. Right between the paws. Hit. I mean, just shoot quarter inch left, eighth inch, eighth of an inch left. Cored out a big chunk of uh, <laughs> of uh, gel through there as it traveled through. And then Ooh, very, I thought there'd be a big blob out the back. That's very interesting. small exit wound closed up. Yeah, you, didn't you, you I, get this little tiny uh, tail of gel, which is indicative of anything that's pulled gel out the back. So yeah, that's interesting because it when the slow I, I saw on the high speed camera it 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 had carried a big blob of slow of gel with it. There you go. Wow. Okay. Very accurate so far. Nice job, gel hole. <laughs> Test number two was just as impressive as test number one, so it wasn't just a fluke. 
Now in my head, I envision the outer race of the bearings spinning faster than the center shaft, but it seems that everything's just spinning at the same speed. It is rather interesting how the slug plows through the gel, never deviates, never stops spinning, and just keeps on going all the way to the berm. What we got? What's the next target, Greg? That is a um, Michigan ballistic gel. Oh, okay. We haven't we haven't covered Michigan yet. Nope. It's expired, and so I'm going to aim for the red apple. No, 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 no. Just aim at the center. Well, that's okay. Just to the left of the apple, then. <laughs> the left edge we, of the we, apple. We're trying center. to capture this one in the vest, and that's always kind of tricky. Okay, ready when you are. Here we go. Whoa. That thing danced straight up in the air. Okay, we finally captured one. So we were aiming for the left side of the apple. We hit the left side of the apple. Not a lot of explosion. The thing shot straight up in the air and twirled like a little ballerina. I was expecting a lot of hydrostatic shock from apple juice, uh, apple sauce. Apple goo. Yeah. However, that little, this little cylindrical projectile, which we finally caught, almost looks like a little stack of watch batteries. Don't give people any ideas. <laughs> How about you take some watch batteries? Uh, flew right through the applesauce. Look at this. It cored out a, a perfect circle of vest carrier. And, and it hit right here, I guess. Uh, Is that it? I think it was this one down here. Oh, okay. I pulled this out earlier, and then I also sliced in between there with my knife. Okay. To get this out. But we found this, what does not appear to be a stack of watch batteries in any way, shape, or form. Here, I'll set them right here. There you go. Yep. People have suggested watch batteries for years for some reason. I think they're just looking at their desk or something and see a watch battery. <laughs> hey, how about a watch battery? Because what they think is that you're sitting around wondering what can we shoot next when you've got a uh, freight train full of a, full of stuff to oh, get to. Oh gosh, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. I've, I've had to tell people to kind of hold off, send us stuff. Why don't you try dimes? We did that. Try AAA batteries. We did that. How about AA? <laughs> okay, how about... Nine volts. How about those lithium watch or flashlight batteries? You yeah, know, have you ever too? shot Vienna sausages? That one comes up at least once. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Try an icicle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's fine. Shut On up. to the next goo. We're, we're insulting half our uh, half <laughs> our audience. Exactly. Test number three, just as impressive as the other tests, and it's hard to believe that we're looking at three radial bearings stuck together and not a you know, a precision factory slug. Now the reaction of the applesauce being hit by a supersonic object like this is actually quite remarkable. Now if the jar had been full of water, the reaction would have been much more violent and reactive. It would have just vaporized it and ripped it apart. So there must be something about the properties of applesauce that prevent it from acting like a normal fluid. Maybe it's a non-Newtonian fluid, I'm not really sure, but it's definitely different. Okay, we're gonna shoot at the blast cloud. You notice the targets get a little smaller and smaller? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. This is our gender reveal. We're gonna be able to tell if it's a boy, if Jeff's having a boy or a girl. <laughs> I, I'm confident he can hit it. Uh, we'll see. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Danny could. Yeah. Oh, oh it's a girl! <laughs> that was cool as heck. That was a lot of blue powder. Yeah, that was a lot more than I thought. Yeah. It's a girl! That sucker. We're gonna be a while here picking up all that chalk. Picking up all the blue. Yeah. If only we had a metal detector. Yeah. Thermal gun. So the uh, cylindrical stack of watch batteries flew in perfectly <laughs> cylindrical right there, just a little bit right of center. Evan is, he is a, a ammunition ballistics expert. I'm, I'm, and I think he has a YouTube channel. I. I emailed him. I thought he told me he had a uh, YouTube channel. I wanted, if I if I can find it, I'll I'll post it. He, He's I, in Texas, right? Yeah. Oh, it's probably Demolition Ranch. Oh, okay. So we blew up the yellow cylinder of blue powder. You can see here, ground zero. There's more uh, blue explosion there than a Vin Diesel dance party. <laughs> and then all of it went casting off the table for another secondary impact down below. And we found this thing, ooh boy, 15 yards away. Yeah, it was way down there. I can't believe we found it, finally. They all stuck together again. 
still usable, I guess. Sure. Well, that one's missing both of the uh, grease seals. Yeah, well, you can't use it then for sealing grease. No, it's, it's dirty now. I don't know, can I still turn it? Oh, yeah, still. The turntables might wobble, but they don't fall down, Jeff. Yeah. Rick it, rick it, rick it, rick it. When the targets become smaller, that means we've become very confident in the accuracy of a slug. On the left, we see the green sabo coming into frame. The rifle in the barrel has to transfer the spin through that sabo to that hardened steel projectile, which is very slick and hard to grip onto. So one thing I did to minimize the amount of slippage was to add some little strips of electrical tape to the inside of that sabo. <laughs> Hank Hill here from the uh, Family Guy, and we're gonna send him downrange and uh, see what we can do with those cylinders to the center. <laughs> we're trolling you guys, by the way. Shh. It's called it's called the Easter egg of wrongness. There's gonna be 80 people. That's no, no, it'll be 80, 800. Yeah, 800. That's not Hank Hill. Okay, if Baseball. you gotta explain the joke, then it's not much of a joke. Okay. Ready for Hank Hill? Right on, on Hank's nose. Okay, right in the dead center. That's always her best results. Aim for the dead center. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, oh my. He did explode. Oh, oh my. Now some tests are very frustrating to go through. Others like this one are a pure pleasure because we have consistency and accuracy. Now, even though the watermelon is about 10 times the mass of the applesauce, the reaction is quite different. So maybe you understand now why I thought the applesauce shot was so unusual. This also shows you why watermelons are infinitely more interesting and reactive than a hollow pumpkin. We have an urn of grandma's ashes. Actually brought out grandma's ashes, but we add a little water to it just so it doesn't get all too puffy in the air. She was a big woman. She was a big, she was a big lady. So uh, let's see if we can hit it. We're almost 40 yards away from the shooting table. These things have been pretty dang active, so <laughs> we're pretty confident we can get it right there. Yeah, right. He's aiming, where are you aiming? Right in the center there, right? Right For here. best results, a little, little center, high, low, I don't know. Actually, with, uh, with fluids, we usually like to aim low, so it blows it up, makes a nice spectacular explosion. The amazing thing about these are they are accurate as a factory round so far as like a, a good factory round. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Okay. When you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Look at that! You see that big old blob of... Yeah, that was neat! That was a slow moving arc of... It was. That was a very good shot. That was a very cool shot. Yeah. I'm sitting here with what remains of Grandma's urn. There's a little puddle of Grandma there. <laughs> the slug turned it from green to red somehow. That's really weird. It's like magic. Yeah, that's how fast the slug was going. Yeah. Slow moving much... arc of goo happens to be chapter one of my uh, unauthorized autobiography. <laughs> Even at this greater distance, we had excellent stability, good accuracy, and beautiful performance. Generally speaking, a projectile loses about 10% of its energy every 10 yards. A lot of people have a hard time wrapping their heads around that, but even a 22 does that. There's a good possibility the slug was indeed subsonic by the time it hit the target here. But we had just a phenomenal amount of energy transfer there, and boy, did that thing blow apart. How about some clear ballistic gel? Get it while it's clear, folks. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> wow, that ball was up there a while. So the round went through, exited out the back in a nice little hole. We found this little piece laying out here about six or seven feet out from the target, covered in uh, ballistic goo. Again, we lost the dust seal. But it's got little, uh, look at the ballistic gel <laughs> captured in there. It's now packed. Look, it's got little black hairs on it. What? Where'd that come from? It needs some uh, manscaping there. <laughs> Still spins. Still spins. These are these are again a surprise. I always think there's so many things that can go wrong, and I always like, ah, that can't work very well. And then 
that, with Evan's stuff, and it always works well. <laughs> you always doubt Evan. I, I don't know why. I need it by ask. Evan's got some well-designed stuff. I don't know that you're probably going to take these out pig hunting with you, but you could. We did find out they were crazy accurate. They stayed together. These did not even separate. I don't think we had one that came. No, apart. they all they all functioned perfectly. Yeah, they all came apart. They all uh, worked. That just dude, I, I, I mean, federal needs to hire them. You know, yeah. come up with this wacky. Wacky loads, you and know. Remember, our longest shot out there at Grandma's Asters was about 40 yards. Yeah. So for something to be pinpoint accurate at 40 yards, now I'm wondering what it would do at 100 yards. But I guess we'll never know. That, were, that, that was the last one. Yep. But yeah, if it's if it's accurate at 40 yards, it's gonna be accurate. Right. You know, to the point where it's. Yep. Adjust your elevation. 100 yards, maybe. Just, maybe. Yeah, you could probably. Uh, as accurate as the shooter, you know. Well, we all know about that. You did good. So there you go, folks. People have nothing to complain about today oh, about sweet you. Jesus, they will complain. Oh, okay. Oh, gee, you should have worn a darker shirt. Unsubscribed. Yeah. It's like I know. all these guys that say that they were never subscribed in the I first place. That's unsubscribed because you talked about Matt at Demolition Ranch, or <laughs> because you even mentioned his name must mean you hate him or something. Why throwing shade? I mean, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Those are the people you want to just like see ya. Yeah, yeah, just go away, please. Just to clear, clear the air, we love everybody here on uh, YouTube Island. Hitchcock 45, Demolotion Ranch, Contest, Contesty Ballistics, <laughs> whoever it is, Contesty. <laughs> Even Buffalo out there on Buffalo's Outdoors. We love everybody. Everybody loves Buffalo. He, yeah. he's, just because he, right? he's real. He, he doesn't put on any... Uh, That's right. As, you got more twang for your twang dollar on Buffalo's channel than any other Heck channels. yeah, yep. One channel that is twang free, if you guys will stop by OG's Danger Show. There's no twang over there, but you might find it interesting. If you're trapped in a hospital bed or a prison cell and you can't change the channel, <laughs> uh, OG's Danger Show is something you might find. Uh, you get a good chuckle out of and maybe you learn something. I mean, right now we could be talking about some stupid sponsor for like some... Oh, simply Safe. <laughs> Hello Fresh, we could be chopping. The, the uh, I could Nord chopping VIP or whatever the hell it is. Selling video games out here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd rather promote, <laughs> Yeah. you know, other channels or something like that, you know. And hey guys, just so you know, until midnight, there's a 70% off Olight flash sale. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, none of that. We just appreciate you guys stopping by, watching the stuff. Uh, appreciate your support down here in the comment section. And if you happen to be a Patreon supporter, thank you very much for and, and amazingly, we, we still read your comments. Um, yeah. Who who does that? Who replies your, I mean, Not a lot of people. There's, there's channels that are like 20,000 that don't, just ignore all their comments. Right. And here we are giving you that attention that you need. Go see if you can get Mark <laughs> at Mark at Demo Lotion Ranch. See if he's answered any one of his comments down below. Yeah, and yeah. Come on back to Tell Flavor Mouse. We're the friendly guys, even though we're yeah. kind of jerks. because we're so desperate. For yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> All we right. Did. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. It's getting awfully <laughs> hot out here. So Jeff and I are going to pack up all of our old blasted apart moldy fruit and uh, put it in a trash bag because we, we believe in And, and you notice we, we cleaned up out of here. We, we're going to start picking up all the blue powder here next. But yeah, if we didn't clean up our mess, we wouldn't be able to shoot out here for very long. Right. Trust us. So clean up after yourselves. Thanks for stopping by. We'll yeah. see you guys on the next video. Evan did a fantastic job engineering and creating these fantastic slugs for us to test. All seven of them performed perfectly, and that's pretty rare. Usually we have at least one hiccup for every test. Here we see the slug plowing straight through the gel without ever tumbling. That's because of the flat nose. Some factory slugs have a flat nose like that so they can be shot through brush. If they hit a twig, they just cut through without any deviation. We had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Feel free to leave comments, unlike other channels, your comment has a very good chance of being read and replied to. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.